each video turns into a passive income that generates your clients while you see uh, showed you guys those uh, the back end of those videos uh, about five minutes ago imagine each of those you know this one particular video gets me a couple three videos uh, three clients here uh, this end of the video is one client and that compounds the more you have the more chances you give all right so youtube workshop for lawyers this workshop is 17 years in the making uh, i've been on youtube for 17 years and not just been as a consumer, but as somebody who's actually been posting from day one. My original YouTube channel, I used to basically just do random vlogs whenever I would go to different parties. I used to crash weddings in my childhood, so I'm not too, you know, not too, you know, it was a thing that I did. And But the important part was I went through the emotions of recording videos, posting them, seeing what people like, and going through those emotions. And then also when I started my law firm eight years ago, one of the first things I did was to create a YouTube channel. So that YouTube channel now has 15,000 subscribers. I'll show you the back end to, to sh kind of show you what that, what it, you know, what I learned from that process. Then three years ago, I did the same thing for Legal Funnel. And also uh, in my first year of starting my law firm, I heard about Udemy. It's basically, it's an online course platform with hundreds of thousands of different courses. And I saw this and I saw basically that a lot of people were basically making money from courses. So I made a goal to make 10 courses in 10 weeks and uh, this is my first year when I had a lot of time on my hands and I I basically had to go through the motions of coming up with the titles researching creating the presentations recording editing posting optimizing pretty much 10 videos in 10 weeks so every week I would go through the motions and that kind of gave me good practice of like doing doing it all I'm going to try to share the back end of Udemy too uh, things that I learned from that uh, but pretty much I went through the, been through the motions to say the least of making videos let me also share kind of like the back end. A lot of people want to see the back end of what the result is. So again, two YouTube channels. So let's start off with the, the law firm one that I started about seven, eight years ago. So 413 videos posted on this particular YouTube channel. Not this one, this one. So 413 uh, videos posted. And in the beginning, you know, it was me. I would post the videos. But I, once I started my other law firms, I realized I didn't have time to post the videos myself. So I've actually got my lawyers who were working for my law firm to make videos. So I went through two rounds of two different lawyers, one including being Andrew, to go basically share with them my kind of my process and get them to basically post the videos. That worked. And that was a good decision that I did because etc. 25, uh, this one's a testimonial. Uh, but you know, those videos are to this day and pretty much indefinitely for the next 10, 20 years, those, those videos will continue getting us clients. So kind of have that in mind. It doesn't necessarily even have to be you. If you have somebody uh, in your firm that could produce content, either long-term or even short-term, that's worthwhile because that's kind of you're building equity with them while they're with you. And even if they leave, whatever, then you could still take advantage of it. So I have that in mind. So 413 videos for this particular YouTube channel. Then I kind of showed uh, for, for almost 15,000 subscribers. Uh, it feels 70% uh, of our clients from this law firm come from YouTube. So that has been the result of that. And then the same thing for the Legal Funnel YouTube channel started three years ago. I made a goal, actually, uh, I made a goal to post one video per week, actually during the challenge, which I'll show you. And that result is 5,000 subscribers, growing 100 subscribers per day now. Um, and that is also joining us, you know, joining us clients. So it does work, but just you got to put in the work basically and stick to it. And last time I, I did this challenge, I did this workshop, I basically put myself under, under the 30 day regiment. I basically said, I want to do 30 videos in, in 30 days. And I did it, but I kept it going. And that's what I'll try to get you guys to do too. I'll, I'm going to create a regimen with you guys. I'll help you create a goal to kind of build up momentum and then eventually we want to keep it going. I mean, when I did that, that was at 428 subscribers. So now you know, to grow that to 5,000 subscribers, again, we're getting clients and good things are coming from it. And also share with you that I you know, did those uh, those courses on Udemy. Those have turned to 29,000 students. I didn't make too much money from it. I think I made about 30K in total revenue from Udemy, but I think it led to those courses, led, uh, led us to having a lot of clients that came from it. One thing that I did learn from Udemy is that if I would have just took those Udemy videos and I would have posted to our YouTube channel, which I only 
did it for like about 10% of the videos, those YouTube videos could have got us literally 10 times more clients if I would have just took those videos and posted it on YouTube. So why YouTube? Well, first of all, yeah, I know every single person here watches YouTube. Well, if you're watching YouTube, so do your clients, your prospects. Everybody's on YouTube, including your clients. Um, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world after Google. A lot of people talk about SEO and marketing, Google My Business, all this stuff. But that's nowhere, nowhere nearly as effective as uh, being on YouTube because it's a video content versus written content. When people see you, when your prospects see you on camera and they hear from you, that's way more likely to turn to a client because you know you already nurture them, they already kind of get to know you on a personal level. So it's the best place to be quantity-wise, but also quality-wise of clients. Also, YouTube, uh, YouTube is the second most popular social media platform out of all the hundreds of different social medias. Over 2.3 billion people worldwide use YouTube, which is almost one fourth, uh, one third or one fourth of the entire world. 74% of adults, three out of four adults in the US watch videos on YouTube. So that means three out of four of your clients are on YouTube. 77, almost 80% of 50 to 35 year olds in the US watch YouTube. And every day people watch over a billion hours of YouTube. And this ultimately leads to that you will get clients and make money for your law firm by making videos on YouTube. And I also share this analogy, each video that you post on YouTube is like owning rental property. Each video turns into a passive income that generates your clients while you see, uh, showed you guys those ba uh, the back end of those videos uh, about five minutes ago. Imagine each of those, you know, this one particular video gets me a couple, three video, uh, three clients here. Uh, this end of the video is one client and that compounds. The more you have, the more chances you give for each of those videos to be able to uh, bring you clients. However, there is no dabbling in doing YouTube. It's one of those either all in or don't do it at all. Because I'm just upfront, let me share that with you. Either commit, I'm going to do this, I'm going to focus on YouTube, or I would say, you know, do something else because it is not like I'm just going to post a couple of videos here and there. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Uh, just being straight up with you guys, that long-term, full-time, all-in kind of commitment to be able to do YouTube. Let's get started. So looking at our, our worksheet, we have two pages, it's two pages. Today's part is kind of like setting the foundation. That's the, that's the foundation. Second page is the process. So we'll get to the foundation in a second, but let me explain the process and then so we could come back to it as well. The best chance of us actually doing YouTube is, is basically it's a batch process. That means when you do something, do it in one shot. You don't want to do a little bit of outlining and then go into recording the video at the same time and then posting at the same time. Instead, you want to take basically we want in one shot, we want to brainstorm all the video topics that we're going to be, uh, that we're going to be doing today and today. So all in all at once, then in one shot, we're going to create all the titles and bullet points all in one shot, which again, we'll do this today. Then in one shot, we want to batch record the videos in one sitting, batch record all the thumbnails or have someone that could do this for us, ideally, and batch schedule and post them. Batch, batch, batch. That's the name of the game to be able to get this done. Let's do it. Let's start off with page one of the worksheet. Again, foundational, that is very important. A lot of people skip over this stuff. A lot of your action comes from first planning it. A lot of people that don't get through the end line is because they never planned it on paper. So I'm kind of gonna force you guys to first start off with the planning part to kind of give us a better chance of us actually doing this. So the first question for you, who is your YouTube channel for? Starting off with the who, who's gonna watch your videos? Okay, provided some descriptions for you guys on the worksheet. Again, this is time for you to right now to answer the worksheet and write things down on your paper. Do best as you could. Provide a sense of who are the people who are going to watch your videos. Explain in detail and visualize your who. Petro says people who are investing in real estate and want to protect their investments. Good. Real estate investors. Be a perfect one. Next question is what top three problems, top three problems are you solving for your clients? This is a good practice regardless of our YouTube channel. Top three problems. I just say if it's car accidents, again, layman, easy language. Well, they need to get their medical bills paid. Number two, maybe they don't know who are the best chiropractors or different professionals that they need. Third, maybe it could be they need to get paid for their time, got the technical legal term for basically missing work. So those are the top three problems. So very layman language. Mike says teaching them how to avoid probate. So avoiding probate, the importance of having a support team and plan in place, case of capacity. Good. 
and then protecting assets from creditors and predators. Perfect. Great start, Mike. Now I want you to put that in the, in the much easier layman language. If you've been in the blank, if you've been dealing with this, uh, you know, you want to avoid probate, blah, 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 just like simplify it. And then last one, Namrita, if you're concerned about who will be your minor children's guardians, if all your family is out of country, figure out your minor children's guardians, how to quickly secure immigration status so you can stay in the US and avoiding annoying court visits and expensive bills while you stay in the US, something like that. I'm just taking your ideas and just trying to simplify for you. You could also take, take this, use ChatGPT to your advantage. So I'm just gonna take this, say simplify, these words into layman language. Put into a little quote mark. There we go. Much simpler. So try that because I haven't already. See if that'll give you a little bit more. Just say simplify it or put it in layman language. The prompt that I use is this. And I say this in 50 words or less. This will help with the one-liner, by the way. Once you crystal clear what are the problems that you're solving for your clients, then your website, then you want to update your website, your funnels, your emails, everything will be talking about this. Your emails, 70% of the emails should be in touch. It's talking about these few problems that they have over and over and over and over, and over different contexts in the story, in the form of stories, in the form of examples, in the form of a case study, in the form of this. Third question, it should be a simple question, is how is your YouTube channel different? Again, it gives a little better idea of how your YouTube channel will be. So how is your YouTube channel going to be different from everyone else's? And how will you stand out from the crowd? Is it going to be very informative? Is it going to be funny? Is it going to be straight to the point? Is it going to be very thorough? Now, what is the adjective that you're going after? Now it says informative, informal, and relatable to our target audience. Yes, that's the right way to do it. Everything, everything that you mentioned is exactly how it should be. Informative, informal, because you know it's most people are uh, are attracted to kind of normal, natural, and relatable, as you said. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you're a lawyer and you're looking to work smart, scale fast, and enjoy life. Right below this video, you'll find a link to book a call to speak to my team so we can tell you how we've been able to help over 500 law firm owners scale their law firm. Now back to the video. Next question is how many videos are you batch recording a week in one sitting? That means when you finally sit down, which I'll get you to schedule it out on your calendar. How many videos are you planning on recording in one shot? You have a couple of choices, either one, three, five or seven. A good place to be to start a good regiment is three. I don't think one is enough. If you want to build emotions, you can start with one. It's fine. But ideally three. And if you can do a seven, you're a superstar. I usually do in my recordings, I do, I push it to like six or seven is what I shoot for. I do I do my best. Sometimes I get to five or six. And I'm super happy and I have the entire week of worth of videos just in two hours, which will I'll get you guys to schedule out shortly. Jamal says three. Good. Share with me in the chat once you circle it. Once you circle it on your paper, I want you also to sign right next to it. You're gonna come in yourself, sign it, and date it. Uh, Sharifa is the superstar. She's doing seven. Great. And now the most important question is: What day and time in the week are you batch recording? Okay. So it's a reoccurring time. Ideally once a week, but you could also, if I've done enough videos, it could also be done once every two weeks, but at the very least, just good default once a week, what reoccurring time, and it should be a day of the week at, give me uh, two hours. So let's just say if you share Tuesday, the uh, Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So two hours, give me, two, give me that two hour period. Please go right now into your calendar. Here's the link. If you want to bookmark this, you can, if you want to add this to a bookmark, like for me, like this is to see my calendar. And this one is to create a event very quickly. I'm say record three videos, okay? But how many videos are you doing? Let's just say I'm doing whatever, Sunday at 10 a.m. 
for two hours. And then right here, all day. No, not all day. Right, repeat, select weekly on that day, the third option. That way it makes it reoccurring. Something else that I do is, you know, something that's very important. I have this coloring system, whatever, like out of office meetings and internal meetings and new meetings. You know, you could potentially change into a red color so it kind of stands out in your calendar. Kind of like how mine is somewhat color coordinated, kind of stands out. So I would say putting your calendar recurring to time is like practically best way to give us the best chance of actually getting it done. And I'll give you another trick is having someone else involved in the process. I should say somebody at your law firm who kind of helps you record the videos, however, shape or form. If you also incorporate them into the schedule, you, add, you send them to an invite, you tell them, hey, we're recording video on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. to 11. That person helps you hold you accountable. An external factor, an external person. External. Usually whenever you need to do something, if you get someone else involved outside of you, more likely to do it. Again, if there's someone else that you can get involved, ideally, great. See if you can add them to the, uh, to the, to the schedule. Send them a text right now. Hey, uh, I want to record, start recording videos. Can you help me record these videos? And can you hold me accountable? Can you come to my office during that time and make sure that we record the goal, which is basically to say that for three or five or seven, uh, that's the goal. The other thing is sign and date. I commit to recording three videos on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Sign it, date it, leave this on your desk, please.